Ladies and gentlemen, step back from Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, I think they got something they want to say. I think they got something they want to say. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I think they got something they want to say. DC. I think they got something they want to say. Welcome back to another episode. Once again, I'm your host, Kirsten, and I have the lovely, my co-hosts, Maxine, the Democratic wildcard. Hey, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Everybody's favorite conservative in New York, Christopher Wright. And we are the Politics Podcast. Today we are on episode 13. Ooh, yes. we're, we're teens. Yes, we're, like, we're, we're, getting, we're getting up there, guys. It's oh yeah, we're going to have bad attitudes, we're going to be cussing people out. You know. Oh no, please, let's not. Let's not go there. That's one thing. Thank God we don't, we're not in no, we no, do that. No, no, um, no. Well, thanks to everyone for listening and sharing the podcast and leaving comments. Please continue to share it with friends and family. Follow us on Politrix Podcast on Instagram and Twitter, Politrix Pod. Find us on YouTube. And if you're listening right now on YouTube, please hit subscribe, leave a comment, and hit like. Um, we, are work- we are working on visuals components of these episodes. You know, we, keep- we talk about that every week. But we talk about that every week. But, you know, just be patient with us. You can also listen to us on Spotify, SoundCloud, and the Anchor app. Um, today, we have a special guest who's in the studio with us, uh, Dr. Basil, um, yeah, Basil Smeichel, Smeichel. She messed it up. <laughs> Michael, You're Michael, like the Baz- mnemonic device. Wait, Basil like nice. Michael, like Michael. Huh? Basil, Basil, like Basil, 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 like Basil, 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 excuse me, I'm so sorry. sorry. We have Dr. Basil, <laughs> Dr. Basil, B. Sizzle for short. Okay, there B. Sizzle, we go. okay, yeah, yeah, B. Sizzle yeah. for short. We got B. Sizzle in the house. Um, he's a distinguished lecturer of um, politics and public policy at the City University of New York School of Labor and Urban Studies and holds a PhD in politics and education from Columbia University. Oh, yay. So does my fiance. Okay, cool. (laughs) But he's in engineering. Okay. As a thought leader and political strategist, he is a familiar face on CNN and MSNBC. I just saw him yesterday. He's super dope. Mm -hmm. And other media outlets where frequent appearances highlight his insights on electoral politics and public policy. Um, Basil, what's Basil was most recently the executive director of the New York Democratic Party during which time I'm sorry during which time he was the second highest ranking Democrat in the state of New York and currently lectures at Columbia School of International and Public Affairs and Teachers College. Welcome. Wow. Wow. That's that's (laughs) introduction right there. (laughs) Dr. Smichael. Let's let's give him a round of applause. Uh, Yeah. All right. (laughs) This is like our this is like the biggest guest we've had, right? Like I mean everybody else, thank you for all the other guests, but we've got I mean we had the we had the last week's episode was pretty cool. But we've got someone in the house that really can teach us a couple things. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a resume for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. We're really um, honored for you to be here. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, you know, this is going to be the episode where we discuss uh, the Democratic debate. I, 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 this is going to be a long, we're going to try to get as much in, like as many topics in. So we're going to try not to like over, yeah. you know, how we do it. We talk a little bit too much. So <laughs> we want to get everything in. But yeah. um, guys, you know, where, how was your week? You know, I still have to ask you, how was everyone's week? Mine was really good. In fact, I'm really busy organizing. It's um, July, so it's Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. Yay! And I'm doing several events I'm really excited about. I'll be speaking at them. Um, One of them, I'm actually working with our local elected official. He's a New York State Assemblyman, Charles Fall, in Staten Island. So it's like really feels good to have some, you know the support of your electeds and we're putting on a mental health event. So really busy. What's the date on that? You should tell us the that's date. That's July 24th. Okay. Yeah. Is it like open to the public? Should yeah, we yeah. Say? Mm-hmm. You should mention that. Okay. Because we've got Staten Island listeners, you know, we yeah. have like at least, we have like a good like, I think it's like like 10% of the New York population is in Staten Island. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So even though like, again... Texas is still growing. Texas is about to beat <laughs> New York in listeners. It's so weird. Who's listening to us in Texas? Shout out to Texas, man. To him over here. Right very conservative in New York, so man. We, we have like, it's so funny. <laughs> Yo, well, remember your point you were saying to me um, that uh, you, you were saying to me yesterday, I think, that mm-hmm. Andrew Yang said, how come conservatives listen to liberals, but liberals don't listen to conservatives? Like, they're mm-hmm. listening. Right. I know. We're like so afraid. We're like, but what did you say? You said we're, we're. We get triggered by yeah. what they say because exactly. it hurts. Like sometimes that's well, why that's why I'm on the show. That's why I'm on the show to trigger them. And no, he's like, so you can't run. Thing, them. No, but the fact that you say, you know, like the comment 
the commentary that can come, and I guess it's triggering. So. Yeah, and so when I trigger you, then I have two listeners here with me who are on the left that don't that can continue to talk with me, then yeah. you shouldn't be triggered. So it's like you we just can't, don't take it. Everyone's like, not if, like that. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not. We're we're seeing, like, we talked about this. We're not offended by someone wearing a MAGA hat. That doesn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't. Yeah. Like, and it shouldn't. It's it doesn't a hat. like it's a red change, hat. Yeah, it, none of that. Like Trump could sit in this room, and I'd love to have a conversation. <laughs> like he's not like I'm not going to run out the room because like people make orange man bad. Orange man bad. Orange man bad. Like he's, you know, but whatever. That's another story. So, um, my week was good. Um, we went by really quick. You know, I, you know, I was in LA last last week, so I finally getting myself back because spending a week there, you're like, I feel like I always get like jet lagged when mm-hmm. I come back from New York. I'm always because I'm always staying up super late because I feel like I have the t- like I'm still on the New York time, but then it's like, yeah, I'm out of it. <laughs> you know, all right? Does that make sense? No, because New York is sooner, but for them, somehow it works out for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but it was a good week. You're moving again. Yeah, I'm moving again, <laughs> everybody. Out there, third, fourth time. I'm losing count now at this point. Uh, <laughs> New York City for you. Yeah, New York City, man. And New York City makes me move because I need to be closer to the trains. I'm realizing if you're in New York City, not near a train, you're, you're asking for trouble. So mm-hmm. Right, right. I'm not, I don't want any more trouble. No more trouble in New York. I'm moving closer. So back to my bed where I was originally, you know, Biggie and Jay-Z's home place. So <laughs> I'm back. And how was your week? Any anything special? Mine? Yep. Oh, I don't. Uh, my week is the same as it generally is. A lot of TV hits, mm-hmm. nice. a lot of running around, a lot of speaking, and trying to find time to write. So mm. Oh, are you cool. writing something? Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm actually working on a book proposal um, to address this the issue of charter schools and the politics of charter schools. Oh in my goodness! So, oh, interesting. Do you know I'm taking my son out of DOE, putting him in charter school. Well, that's good. Well, I mean, <laughs> if it if it works for you, well, that's good. The it's the first, um, Staten Island is going to have the first ever school for kids with dyslexia. Oh, wow. Well, I yeah. know there's somebody here that was actually really focused on establishing one uptown. Yeah. Everyone like went off on the borough president in Staten Island. Uh, he heard them and he finally did something about it. Well, that's good. So I didn't know that's what your book was about. That, Ooh, we that, is, my, that is my <laughs> area of expertise, I want to hear you your, well. oh school my God. choice and, um, and po- the politics of education, but also uh, school choice and privatization, marketization of it, of schools. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Love it. We'll be, we'll cool, be here yeah. to we'll be here to support it. So, uh, looking forward to that. Um, so, t- yes, you know, the last two days were the Democratic um, debate. Did we all mm. did we all watch that's, it? That's what you call it a debate. <laughs> <laughs> did we all watch it? Unfortunately, <laughs> what was everyone's overall reaction to it? That's uh, politic, by the way. Um, yes, it politic. was. Yes, that's that's politic. Uh, pandering, 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 pandering. Who can out pander who? I can speak Spanish. Well, I can speak better Spanish. Well, I can. Uh, I can. I can do a freestyle. Look at me. I can rap. Well, you know, I didn't do that, but you know, they was, might as well. They're getting to that point. It's like just, just. T- I don't know, man. Just, just tell your policies. Who, who you are as a candidate. What you're here to do. What are you know? How are you going to support? Don't just bash Trump half the time, and then spend the other time half the time pandering. Like you know. Mm. Well, yeah. what did you think? I mean, I'm I'm very biased, obviously, because mm-hmm. I've I've declared at this point that I'm part of the Yang Gang and I'm you know a supporter of Angie Yang, so I was frustrated with that second debate. Mm, they did um, Yang dirty I on didn't that feel debate. like it was moderated fairly. I don't actually. I was going to ask you guys, like, do you know? I know it's random. Choice. Were you upset that he didn't wear a tie? No. no. Oh, yes, I was. That's she one of was. my topics. I wasn't. That's Yang needed. Look, look at I wasn't. Oh, but but oh, Kirsten, oh, Yang yeah. needed a tie. Kirsten <laughs> was bringing. I was like, why do we care? But then Kirsten was like bringing it to my attention. I said, like, you gave me a good perspective. You okay, could, you could talk about say, that later. Yeah, but um, yeah, overall, I just, I, I didn't, I was asking myself like, I know the, it, the choices of who's on stage was random, but like, is it intentional that the way that the front runners got more time, more questions? Um, I don't know if that's formal policy, but I could see why. Mm. I mean, okay. I can just, I can, I can understand why. Okay. If you're, it's like if you notice the dynamic on night one, um, at least initially, a lot of the um, questions kind of came off of uh, Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Um, I think she was a very early focus of that debate. I wasn't a, I wasn't a huge fan of the fact that she was. Mm-hmm. But. I think, but if you if you think about the dynamic that's played out, she's the one that's developed the most policies fully, mm-hmm. I, right? You know, right. Outside of Yang, so a lot of <laughs> right. So, so a lot of so my sense is that 
she's the highest uh, polling candidate on mm-hmm. that stage on that night. Yeah, right. But this which is probably why she got the first question or or spoke and a lot a of lot. the questions. Right. They were like but debating a, her policies actually. Right. Yeah. But that's what I was about to say that you saw a lot of the questions essentially right. riffs off of her mm-hmm. policy mm-hmm. to say, hey, do you support that? Well, where are you on this and then so on and it all sort of came back to her. I wasn't a huge fan of that because I think the format should have been a bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but the same, a similar dynamic happened the second night. Right. And so you tend to, so you're going to focus on those folks. And then obviously, if, what's her name, Marion Williamson wants yeah. to speak, I love her. she's not going to speak to, you know, busing necessarily. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so, so they're not going to be questions that are going to be geared toward what she specifically wants to talk about. Mm-hmm. And that's the challenge with having 10, one of the challenges mm-hmm. having 10 people on stage at the same time. So what would you have wanted to see? Well, if I really, if I could wave a wand to do it over again, I would have more debates with smaller groups. I agree. Mm. I agree. Mm. Yeah, totally. That's but that's definitely. not. Would you totally have participate? Would we get as much engagement? No, you wouldn't. Yeah. And that's the that's the oh, balance, right? So you're not you going to get the TV viewers uh-huh. mm-hmm. with so many. And mm-hmm. the truth is, if you even if you did. Mm-hmm. If you really wanted to hear Warren, would you really stay around if you divided it in, let's say, four debates? If you really wanted to hear Warren, would you see the other three? Mm-hmm. Right. And so that so I understand the balance that they had to strike with wanting to make sure that they had a captive, a, the largest captive audience possible. But there's no way that you can hear from 10 people in two hours and feel like you actually learned something. Right. Unless, unless, we're the, let's, unless we're talking about the Wu-Tang Clan, then... That's the only time it works. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so what was your reaction to it? What? How did you feel? Did you feel like it was... Did we? Are we in the right direction? Do we have work to do? Like, what are... How are you feeling as... You know, <laughs> once the second person and Demo- second powerful Democrat in New York. So, so, <laughs> so the comment, the question I'm always asked is, who are you supporting right now? Oh, I wasn't going like to ask that. I wasn't, wasn't going to ask that though. No, but I wasn't. That's, that's I the, the beans. That's, I, I that, wanted to that's know. That's really the answer to the question yeah. because I, I, I haven't picked a person yet because I haven't. I don't feel like I've really learned enough about the pros and cons of each to make a good decision. Um, I know all of them in some mm-hmm. way, shape, or form, and I know Corey very well. Um, but the and of course Kirsten and she's and De Blasio and right, right. But um, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sold on any of them yet. Uh, I'm telling you, and if because, he's saying that, well, that's, that's you know, and and no, you know, be I, real. I, I, that really I, scares me. It, that really scares me. And I want to hear more. Um, it's Everyone has their pros and cons. I'm not. I don't believe in this issue of electability in the way that we talk about it because mm. I just I don't know that we can ever quantify that. Um, but I will say that I think uh, if you ask me like how the debates went, I don't generally think about it in winners and losers. I think about it in who helped themselves and who hurt themselves. Mm. That's true. And. <laughs> Over the course of the two days, I think Julian Castro helped himself a yeah, lot. Totally. I actually think he Definitely. was probably the person that helped himself the most. Yeah, getting oh, okay. from where I think he, he was, was to where he was. Like, I forgot winner. about him. Huh? I totally forgot about him. They were like him. checking polls, and like I guess they considered him to be the winner of the first night. Definitely, yeah. I mean, he, he, yeah. he spoke the best Spanish for sure. I'll give <laughs> oh, it. Oh God! <laughs> and so to that point, I actually think Beto hurt himself the most. Oh my God! Talk about that. Beto. I thought that Spanish. We're gonna get. And then, and then your, and then Cory Booker, then your yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, then he know, know, jumped know. in and started, and then started just like doing reggaeton. Uh, <laughs> no one understood I love what it, he was I love saying. It. That, was, that was the best part of the debate. I think that was, that was so. Good. So can I just tell you my overall reaction? So you know, I didn't see the second one until like last night because mm-hmm. I was like um, at an event, but. First night was okay. Yeah. You know, it was like, again, it felt like I was just watching like a bunch of people trying to fight to like, I want to talk. I want to talk. Um, but the second night, you know, Bernie just looks angry. 
<laughs> and we knew he's always been angry, but he just it's like so it's like negative now it's like there's no positive really? he's not uplifting to me i thought he was he just, calmer than he usually yeah is. but he doesn't uplift me he looks so angry and mad it's well, just like calm down he, like why are you always so mad he's, about, like, he's like bitter how can you be the like, president of the united states and we feel like it's like ominous when yeah. i when you speak everything you say is like everything is like going down the tubes and i know Definitely. that mm. he is trying to change things but what i'm noticing with him is that he literally brings like a negative energy to mm. like the whole like it's just not it's not it, just i mean i want to i wanted to that's one of my things i wanted to um talk about one of your points you made and i noticed that throughout both debates and i don't know if it's like a democrat thing or a political thing but mm. i'm kind of tired of this gloom and doom kind of perspective that's on both sides though but i'm like i realized it when i was watching the debate i'm like everything is like the world is ending and people can't feed themselves and you got four jobs and it's just like that's the way they present this like yeah. america's this terrible place Sometimes where we, everything don't you feel like that, that feel and like i've got to fix it and, and it's kind of like hypocritical when yeah. a lot of y'all are have been in government for a long time so you're almost like saying you haven't been effective in doing anything because you're saying how bad the conditions are for everybody so i feel like i get it we need to address like real systemic problems but i don't like the way it's being portrayed anymore it's just it's too like negative yeah i think i think it yeah i I definitely think everybody's doing the negativity i I do well no i just trump does the like but i do that bernie is way more like negative and then the other thing obviously i told you the tie thing i think that was a misstep for him i know for you you might i think you think think I don't know if it's a What's look. The big deal? I, I'm all about like being in your authenticity, and I think that's, that's authentically him. Yeah. Thank you. The question is though, how does the average primary voter, who's probably a 55 year old right. woman, but who's hold up, right, Wait, look, how do they view? that how did that but double standards but, you know but, you have but, to be hold up. But, what if they told a woman what she was wearing or her didn't they put did. makeup hillary, on they said hillary looked like a chinese like, did she then, and we went off on them so now we're telling exactly. a man that he should wear a tie i'm not saying he should wear a tie but a lot of people have that that's you have to you always have to be conscious of like how things are going to be perceived right. yeah but, mm-hmm. you, but so with hillary because i worked for her for years mm-hmm. you know it was like why doesn't she wear skirts yeah you know, it's like or like, or, a pretty, heels. Yeah. or like a pretty or dress. Heels. Or Kamala makeup, too. Or she never wears. I want to see dresses. Doesn't... Like throw on a nice dress. Like Why? but that make yourself a I little don't... fashionable. You, like you got like just... you got like Yang Gang being Yang Gang. Thank you. He, he, like he, long... he didn't get to where he was at by being a politician. Totally. Plain and simple. No, I agree and with you. That's if you didn't get to where you were at to being a politician, just like Trump didn't get to where he was at by being a politician, mm-hmm. then be who you were to get there. He didn't roll up like in slacks being disrespectful. No, 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 man. I think it was. I know, but I hear you guys. It's the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. You can I can kind of see the whole. Oh, you got to wear a tie. You know, yeah. there's a bunch of old, rich, white people. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. Republican Party, not the Democratic Party. Yeah, I the Democratic I mean, Party is supposed to be the party. Controversy think... when Barack wore a tan suit. Ra- hello, hello, hello. That was like a crisis. Like, like, we needed yeah. to figure yeah. out. I was like, on what... Fox News that week. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? This is talking it? Talking about a tan suit. Oh, man. But this is what I feel. I feel like, for, and I think for Yang, it's just, he's fighting right now the perception right now because he's this really cool guy. We know you're cool. Your we your your supporters know you're the guy that we relate to. We love that. But now you have to talk to the people who don't know you, mm. and you have to look presidential. You can't right. just come roll up there with your shirt open, drinking water, saying he's cursing, saying yeah, he a did. word. He it's did. like you oh, gotta remember. He yeah, did. but you gotta, like, you gotta remember. You gotta remember that this is it's no like this is the real Seriously? deal. Like yeah, you're running you're for right. president. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not like he like president of you know uh, some other some fan club. And we know you can. We know your policies are going to light a match in people's eyes but if you're like looking like you're but you can mold somebody to be I, political you well this, totally i mean i think someone like i think we need I mean, someone trump, like trump, you trump jump in and help him and help. we need some real trump, like uh, trump is an example of that i mean like he he's i don't even want to get more into how he was as, <laughs> no but at least <laughs> trump wore his t- his ties that like went down to his ankles yeah. like, i do i do long trump ties. i do want to say i feel like he is like being refined Mm-hmm. Who is Trump? Thank you. Thank he's you starting to. He's, 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 he's being he's, less exactly. like off the wall, vulgar. He, yeah. He's just I don't know. Well, so he's, he's, he's not doing thug like Trump. Look at well, the, when he had the thug like me going on with bit? Trump. I mean, so like, com- did he tone not it down a little bit? Say the other day at a rally when the woman, uh, forget her name now, accused him. The Muslim. Oh right. Oh, no. Type. He made yeah. a good point. I mean, 
that was kind of that was not, coming back. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, yeah, he's not. But overall, it's not yeah, every it, single day. Like, oh my god, did he just say that? Did he just? No, no. Do yeah, that? I, I mean, if you look at me, that's what it was. Like, there's one point he was like every other day. I mean, he was not beating up a news reporter every other day. Like, he was embarrassing one. Mm-hmm. And you, you read they had a clips. They had a Thug Life clip. So I used to watch him all the time. I love him. <laughs> and what well, he was embarrassing reporter every other day. He's not doing it every other day anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, so mm-hmm. that's. Mm-hmm. The, and the then can we just talk about Marianne for one second? Like, why is everybody beating up Marianne? Because she so is she very like is she she, too off the wall for people she is and she's spiritual and you know what I was with her into the very very end when she said like let's fight this with love and I was like girl (laughs) what's wrong with that it's People I, are afraid spiritual. of love. That's she's bro- very, she should have said, let's fight. Self, bro. Yeah, she's a man, self-help fight with love, just, man. But you know what? She made so many points, and I really wish people were listening to her. The like the one about the, the, well, you know how I feel about that. But the healthcare one, she was like, you guys are all up. First of all, she said, where have y'all been? Because all of you are in government. Mm. That was one thing. And then she said, the second thing, she said, you guys want to all talk about healthcare. Mm. But why are they getting sick in the first place? You don't want to address the problems right. to begin with. And I was like, thank you. An adult in the room. She's that like, you're so Chris reactive. Rock joke. Huh? That was a Chris Rock joke. Oh. Many years ago, yeah. That must, yeah. So I get all my conventional wisdom from Star Wars, Chris Rock, Seinfeld, and the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> all of life, sort okay. of. Yeah, that's all you need right there, man. Right. <laughs> and the so boat. there was a Chris Rock joke many years ago, and he was like, um, he, he was making a point, and he was he would always say, the money's in the medicine, not the cure. The money's in the mm. medicine, not the cure. And he kept repeating that. And it's like one of those really sort of big moments with Chris you know because of the way his mind works in his mm-hmm. comedy so he would always say that and the two things that I always get from him the money's in the medicine not the cure and the the difference between being rich and being wealthy mm. Mm. You, you don't know that no man I feel mm. old um, <laughs> the diff- he would say and I forget who he used but he was like Kobe Bryant is rich, but the guy who signs his checks is wealthy. So. Oh, right. I remember that. Yeah, he, he, did, he did another one. Was he the comedian that said, um, are you the, you watch those commercials where you wake, where they say, are you tired? You go to sleep and wake up in the morning. Then you have yeah. this problem. Is that, you see that comedian that's that makes that's that bit? Yeah, that's yeah. That, 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 yeah, he was like the commercial cheesy commercial guy. Like, yeah. hey, good morning. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah he, that he just, that. no, but basically saying that, these medicines that they like advertise to yeah, you right, they're right. basically like they give you all these different lists of things it's like yeah I do wake up in, in yeah. the morning that's true <laughs> I do ha- I do have this disease it's like yeah. it's, reverse it's like, psychology right yep. right right so to your point about I, I the funny thing is the only people that I know that really like her are all my friends that do yoga <laughs> That's it. Like, those are the only people that know her. Mm. Mm. Oprah and, knows her. Oprah knows her. And, oh, yeah. Her spiritual advisor. He's very yoga. spiritual, yeah. That's her, that's her spiritual advisor. See? Possibly. That's her spiritual advisor. That makes sense. Okay, so let's try to get into this. Um, interesting um, take on everything. Um, so, we're, I guess the total consensus is that we don't see, we haven't seen anything that, like, really... Not well, enough. Well, one quick question. Uh, speaking mm. about health care, what was with Joe Biden, if you don't mind me asking, Sleepy Joe? He looked a little out of it there, and that a mean? little spaced out to me. At times. No, I mean, I think he was just feeling defeated right off the bat. I think he was just ready to like, who's gonna come at me? Like these are top. Like it's just he's he's been doing this for forty years, like over forty years. Like he's like yeah, he's showing his age a little bit. Look, well, like we're gonna to have an age clip. We're gonna talk about yeah. age. Yeah. So let's get into um, Kamala Harris. So Kamala Harris confronted Joe Biden on race relations and his previous stance on busing to schools post racial segregation. Um, you want to p- play the clip? Yep. All right. Let's see. Let's see. You it. agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America. Then. No. Do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the second it, class to integrate Berkeley, it, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have the Voting Rights Act. Okay, so was that a mischaracterization of Joe's stance on civil rights? What are your thoughts? So this is a it's a it's an interesting moment where both can be right and both can be wrong. Okay, I think first and foremost, 
we should acknowledge that that was a masterfully engineered strategy on Kamala's yes. part. Yes. Because okay. that's what it was. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. She was ready for that and one. She was, this, is, this was her saying, I'm going, to, I'm going to needle Joe on issues where black folks are concerned because he's doing very well in the black community. Mm-hmm. And you can't out-black the black person, right? That's my mm-hmm. rule of thumb on, when, oh. in campaigns. And on Biracial. Stage. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he always got a, he's got a zingers ready for us. Just comes. I'm old school, so that wasn't on the census yet. But <laughs> I got you, I got you. But, and she's, yeah, but I get it. Yeah, you're right. She's kicking black, she's Indian, and black, so she's black. Come on. So, um, so that said, you know, the what was interesting to me in the way that that sort of came came off was. Bussing in and of itself is mixed a mixed bag. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, um, I was on Ari's show last night, and he raised Derek Bell, who's a intellectual hero of mine. If you mm-hmm. if you read Derek Bell, yep. you really should. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said he said that you know bussing bussing is you know it has its advantages, its disadvantages. Sometimes at times it could be downright evil mm-hmm. and violent and dangerous. And so th- individual decisions to take part in it. Um, and to promote it had, in some cases, not bad effects because they actually did integrate schools. And then in other cases, places like Boston, even not just in the South, but other cities, mm-hmm. there were violent protests against it and kids and families were being you know, harassed and abused and so on. Wow. So mm-hmm. it, it, it has a very mixed and, and uh, troubled history. Having said that, I think the mistake that Joe made in that moment was talking about states' rights. Like that, from a race standpoint, you don't do that. Mm. Because that's the argument for the federal government not um, pressuring southern states to end Let's segregation. Which, yeah, is what she was basically Which is what she say. was saying. Right. Mm. It's the argument for allowing... Um, reproductive rights in some states mm, to become so which much is more big draconian, deal right now, right? And mm-hmm. so, so in a, in a sense, what she was doing is saying, uh, and I, you know, and I and I had said this before that she in at, in one moment embraced his um, his history and his stature and his experience, and then used it against him mm-hmm. in the same breath by saying. Yeah, you have this history. You you you're doing you you know we we understand that to some extent you've been you know a champion of civil rights, but you can't use your your embrace of segregationists to make that point to Black America in today's mm-hmm. politics. And she didn't have to say all of that, but like that's what we got, yes. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And and that's the pro- that, so that's from her standpoint. That was a great moment, perfectly engineered. From his standpoint, you know, this is the problem that Joe Biden is going to have. Mm-hmm. When you have a really long resume, you have yeah. to explain it to people that don't know you. And right. when you're explaining, you're losing. And that's <laughs> the that's, true. that's he that's why he seemed not just he seemed, I think, old from the get go. Mm-hmm. But yeah. what he also got was that he was from that moment he was defensive. Mm-hmm. And then, that's, and what that's I mean. very and you saw like right afterwards he's like, No, I went up to reporters was like, No, I'm a civil rights guy. I've been right. guys, you know? <laughs> and even the next day he, he was like, right. Still yeah. talking about it. Then that's but then what about the fact that first of all, there's two things that I wanna ask because I don't understand why all these things are coming up now when he was when he was running for V when he well when he when he was running with Obama as the V P candidate we weren't bringing up any of these things. He like he literally got the green card. Like mm-hmm. to get, we like gave him the card blanche. You are, you know, we love you, Uncle Joe. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like everybody's turned on him. You know, it's like it's starting to like. And then the other thing is, you know, I was going to ask trend, about the though. Kamala thing. Is mm-hmm. like, I wonder why no one brought up the fact of this the crime bill. Like, why isn't are they holding out on that one? Or is that something that? Because yeah. I thought if you really want to get him on the crime, you can talk about the crime bill like that. Well, everybody that was in the news the week before, right? And they kept going. It, it will come up again. Oh, I think it's going to come up. Um, it's going to be a good... That I mean, I'm he sure he... He answered prepared. it. No, fr- but this is going to be, like... 
every what single candidate, they they're going to say, they all are going to attack him on that. I mean, if I, but if I was Joe Biden, I would have attacked her on when she was attorney general. She, and he did. He said, I was a, a public defender while you chose to be a prosecutor. Yeah, he did. I thought he that was dope. I, he, I love he, that he, he did that. Deeper, but he didn't really say he it. Like, because people though, don't really right. know. Like, he, it was like kind of like a back. Yeah, but I knew what he was talking. I was like, okay. Yeah, he needed to make the point as to why a prosecutor, which today is kind of like an evil, gross thing to do. Yeah. He needed to make that point because he was trying to. Which I we which people trying to target black by the way I don't know if you follow this but people of color I don't know if you look on like Shade Room or anything like that's like the more like lowbrow um, news source for people of color it's a black but TMZ it's a black TMZ <laughs> but people every time you post a Kamala like um, post they're done they cannot she, they no, I know she's got she problems. literally yeah. is I mean I go through the comments like yeah. there's got to be a couple. Everybody's <laughs> slamming her. Everybody, they just really. Oh, and she did it. She, the fact so that she put calling? people in jail. With the her. fact that she put people like black people in jail, which my mom says, like, okay, but if they're doing crimes, shouldn't they be going to jail? But they like, said she was see, like, but that is exactly the problem. The problem. That is exactly the challenge of attacking Joe on the crime bill. It's a, that's exactly it. Okay. And I'll tell you why. If you watch, and I showed this to my students. Mm-hmm. Um, his speech on the floor of the Senate to support the crime bill. I don't know if you've seen it, but you gotta watch it. It is a phenomenal mm-hmm. clip mm-hmm. because he he really leans into. Oh yeah, I saw it. Like, it gets a little aggressive. He's aggressive. He's like, I don't really care where. I don't care these where people, they started. Where from. they started. Mm-hmm. I don't care what was in their past. We got to lock them up. It was really. It was. Tough. Who is this on? This is Joe Biden. 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 This is what I told you about Sean yeah, King posted this. Yeah, he was like oh. basically hammering, it's hammering. A, it. And I actually it remember when that happened. It's a tough, mm. tough speech. Now, having said that. This is another situation where the the sentiment at that time was mixed, because if I grew up in the Bronx, so I you know I remember the crack era mm-hmm. vividly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I lost a lot of my friends to that, in prison or dead. Oh, uh, vividly. Okay, and what people, I understand the effect of the that bill, right? And aggressive policing. I mm-hmm. you know I in New York with Giuliani's sort of. You know, aggressive policing that led to Luima and Diallo and and the countless others that we haven't heard right, about. Right. But if you also remember at that time, there were a lot of members of the clergy. There were a lot of grandmothers she, she who were like, "Get mm-hmm. these kids off the corner. Yeah, mm-hmm. we want these kids off the street." Right. Um, if you look now at you walk through Harlem or Bed Stuy or other places and you see a lot of storefront churches. Okay. That was an actual strategy by a lot of clergy members to try and clean up the block mm. oh. because you can't have certain, you know, the crime, the penalties are stiffer for people selling drugs and doing other stuff around churches. Oh. And so oh. that I was a. Thought, I saw locations sometimes where was, they're looking like, right. why they had church right there? Right. I'm, like, okay, I'm not saying that they were like, I'm not saying that all the clergy members in the city came together to do that, but I'm just saying. That's a strategy. Yeah. That was it used. was like we got to take the corner back right. right so how do we do that we put a church on the corner so people are praying instead of selling and so on right so that so so the there were communities that came together to say we've got to find a way to get these kids off the corner and I always I always try to bring it to a pop culture reference if you remember New Jack City oh I was just looking mm-hmm. it up mm-hmm. you go. Mm-hmm. Right. I was literally looking See? like what's the name of the like, Wesley Snipes movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so like funny the, the cops were the the heroes of uh-huh. that movie right uh-huh. Ice, Ice-T by the way was in there and okay Nelson. Yeah. anyway um, I'm a movie buff so I, you know, yeah. good movie by the way check it out young people yeah. out there mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but if you remember I there was like... a Chris Rock was actually also in that movie right yeah, yeah he's a great if you remember the when they they took over the Carver right and they you know they were starting to recruit a lot of the folks in the building and in the neighborhood to help them be lookouts to sell for them so on and so forth that was a sensationalized version of things that were really happening, happening. when mm-hmm. i first moved, well and the clergy too you can see yeah. you saw that too where the, That's right. they were like the like the people like the reverend stuff were like kind of saying like you got to help the block they were outside like trying right. to like we need help and stuff like right. it was a it was a national it was a crisis yeah, we have was. to say so when but putting people, people in jail we is talked about this like it's relative yeah. you know what i mean cuz now it's in hindsight we're looking at it saying how bad was this but i wouldn't i we always said like That's i wouldn't want to walk around i remember my parents don't have an opinion on the crime yeah. when you're 5 years old right <laughs> Because I know when I was growing you know, up, six, like, when I was 
when I was growing up in New, and I grew up in the Upper West Side, my um, I, I I lived on 97th Street. My mom told us we couldn't go up, we couldn't go past 100th Street, mm. like at all. Like 100th Street was the limit. So everything, all my schooling was all you know downside because she just felt like it was the most dangerous place to be walking right. around and stuff. And to be honest, you know, like I remember drive like when we were driving up like to like go to the airport or something, you would see like and this is in the 90s, you would see like people it, like or homeless people with like fire in their gar- in the garbage yep. and like tr- warming up their hands or whatever. Huh. And it was just like you really saw it was like a yeah, it almost I that it's like night and day when you look well, at Harlem now. It mm-hmm. really is. Well, I was born in 1972, so okay. I, and and I grew up in the Bronx, so that so you, was a oh whole. Oh my God, you have right to have like the most. The of the There's a there are some trains with my graffiti on them. But <laughs> uh, hopefully the statue of the penalty is uh, yeah. <laughs> but, Don't but, snitch them right now. But back to the, the you know, but so so I think with the crime, so I think that goes back to the point about Joe that right. he, he, if you, it's hard to try to make. Um, present day judgment about a situation that occurred 20, 25 years mm-hmm, ago. Mm-hmm. But the problem is if you're running for president, you're going to have to explain it. Right. And, right. That's, and that's the, that's the, pro, that's the challenge he has on a debate stage with 10 people. He's not going to have time to explain. Mm-hmm. He just fell into a trap perfectly executed. Mm-hmm. And that's the end of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. The question yeah. is what's going to happen come you know, in two months or whatever, when we've whittled 20 down to 10 or Mm -hmm. whatever, then it becomes a little more intimate. He'll have more time to respond. Right. The same attack won't work on him again. Right. Somebody's going to be like, okay, we're going to be ready for this. Yeah. But again, you know, there's a lot in his background that he's just going to have to explain. Very quickly, to your point about, do we give him a pass in a way? Yes. I'm not sure. I think during the primary... He was Joe Biden, so we took for him for all that he was. It was he was is he actually and the black was, guy signed him off, right? Off. He was, a, he was no, a necessary. He, he was, was a necessary because there was no way they were going to put a black man in 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 the office and Without. not have someone that can kind he, of he's balancing, right? Yeah. And, and and look, by that time he ran a few. Joe had run a few times, so we sort of knew who he was, right? Um, and the, the truth is, going to your point. Uh, Obama had a phenomenal amount of political capital and you can never underestimate the power of having that mo- amount of political capital. So he says, he's my man. And we're like, okay. well, you're my man. So he's <laughs> my man. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. he's, he's cool, guys. And we're like, he's oh, a transitive sure? property, right? He's, he's, he's my man. Like Donnie Brasco, not a friend of mine, a friend of ours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another movie. <laughs> good, good movie. movie. Another good movie. movie. <laughs> Well, hello, hello, hello there. It's Chris here with a special message for our listeners. I want to thank you for listening to Politrix Podcast and want to share an exciting offer to entrepreneurs and supporters. We are now offering businesses the opportunity to be advertised on our show during this mid-roll. If you're interested, please email hello at politrixpodcast.com. We're also taking support from our listeners through the Anchor app. Just click support this podcast and you can give whatever you want. The funding is helpful to help us increase our production at video and start marketing and advertising for our podcast. We appreciate you and please continue to listen to the show. All right, so let me get to this next one because this is a, a interest. This is a funny one. We all we all, we kind of mentioned this. Um, so this is a, with both Beto and Cory Booker. Beto. Uh, Beto. 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 <laughs> Why do I like pronunciate people's names? It's Beto. It's ba- <laughs> Beto. 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 Beto O'Rourke and Cory Booker responded to the debate questions in Spanish. This was outputting to some viewers um, as trying too hard while some Spanish speakers appreciate it is. Well, right. let's hear it. I'm going to do a couple, not, not the whole thing, but just a little. Yeah. Cada persona en el éxito de esta economía. Pero si queremos hacer eso, necesitamos incluir cada persona en nuestra democracia. Uh, cada votar, ca, cada votante necesitamos la representación y cada voz necesitamos escuchar. Right now. Okay. No, I'll and, and, so and in is the clip, good thing, Corey's is, giving side eye. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the best side eye. No, so is this a good this. Th- like? So is was this a good thing to like? You know, I guess capture support from the Latinx community, or was this like a total pander job gone wrong? Pandering one on one, right there, and that's what. Why it was. do you think it was pandering? Uh, it was pandering because it's just like. <laughs> 
it's like we're in this is America. I mean, I hate to be like, oh, oh redneck Arkansas, but it, it is. Like, I thought I hit two on my television on accident when I was watching the debate. I'm like, <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> like, why are we, you know, between them and uh, I forgot the name, the Castro guy, the Telemundo. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no, you mean um, Fidel Castro's nephew, I call him. Uh, the uh, uh, just... the NBC moderator. Yeah, yeah, that was speaking in Spanish. I'm like, w- come on, man! Like this is killing me here. And I know there's an audience here that you guys are catering to, and you know, you you're, you, you know, you're kind of like, hey, we we see you guys out there, we're doing it. But my thing is, it's it, when you become a citizen of this country, and if it, it part of it is, a, you know, and being patriotic, man, being a part of American experience, and being a part of American experience is watching a debate in English, and well, I don't know. I don't know about that comment about America being. No, no, no. Can be but, in a country, but, but still, this, it was pandering on there. This, is my, too. this is my take. Because he didn't speak good Spanish. Like, yeah. You just well, good Spanish. Seems like, okay. So he's, well, saying that, were, he's saying that we're not supposed. Because this is America and English is the, the language that we, we speak, we should just speak in English. Is that right? Well, yeah. And also, if you become a citizen of the country, you've got to want to be a part of that country. If I became a citizen of Germany. I just yanked you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is is how I feel about it. Because he got mixed opinions. There was some in the Latino community that were like, stop. You know? And then there were others that were like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, they felt good about that. But this is my thing. Like, if you can speak Spanish and you want that to be known, I think that's important, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's the way you do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, it was awkward how he did it. He Mm -hmm. just broke out in Spanish. And he didn't say, like... And what I just said was, like, to have a nice transition. It was just so awkward. First of all, this is on every Spanish televised production. And and if not, it's in Spanish subtitles. So anybody who doesn't speak English would have still been able to find a method to speak Spanish. I mean, to hear it in Spanish. So it was just weird. And also, like... I feel like you have to figure... Like, Tim Kaine, for example, he was Hillary's VP. He can speak Spanish, right? Not good. His but also was is, horrible. But the thing is, I hate hearing his... <laughs> and that, <laughs> and by the way, the worst candidate, she, that guy was not the great okay. VP. Okay, sorry. That's another topic. I know, sorry. But the point is, like, he, would, he like, did a whole like a campaign goofball. speech to a Spanish-speaking audience. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, like, that... It just flows better than to just randomly on national television yeah. in the middle of your in the middle of your response break out in Spanish and then go back to English. And it was just weird to me how he did it. Yeah. And then Corey too, like it was like a competition of who can do this better. I don't, and, and it was disrespectful in my opinion. If I was Hispanic and might watch it's like, what are you guys trying to do? I, I don't think it's disrespectful because if someone took the time to learn their language, I think people appreciate that. But it just needs to be authentic and but genuine. If, if and I it, was a person, it, it felt, I felt like he forced it. Yeah, he did. He but, if a, I, but if I was Hispanic who spoke English and I was an American, but there's some like, that I, I, don't. I, yeah, but I know that. But the ones that do, like, what about them? They're citizens here. They got the, the, the time out. They said, I love this country. I want to learn English as well. They learned English. Now they're watching this sh- debate. And now they're like, oh, look at you. You're Hispanic. Oh, look, look. I can do Spanish. I can do Spanish. <laughs> and it's like, I'd be like, what the heck are you doing, man? It's just, I'm watching the English debate, like speaking English, bro. I understand English. So I, I, mean, I, I agree with you. I, I'm sorry. No, 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 I, no, I, I, I agree with you. I think there's a time and a place for everything. Mm. And you, it was out of context. And I think that was Corey's face. That that, that was my face when it <laughs> happened. It was like, and, this is a little out Castro- of Space the best. And, right and so but that actually brings me back to my earlier point where you can't can't out black the black guy mm. like there's a, a latino spanish speaker on stage so you're going to try to see more closer to that community <laughs> than he is yeah don't do because it because that's not going to work right and so there's a time and a place for mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. i think you know if you're in a if you're obama because he did this all the time i mean look we're in new york Mayors speak Spanish and elected officials mm-hmm. speak Spanish. When you're in that a crowd that is mixed or predominantly Spanish speaking yeah. crowd, so they do appreciate that to some no, extent. And I've, yeah. and I've seen that. I think right. did. That's okay. And that's, that's okay. A, right. it makes to perfect sense. And so, and again, I think you're right. The context is very important. And if if I'm like Obama because he did this all the time, and he'd say da, 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 yes, we can. He said puede. You know, because and depending on where he is, because that's you understand that, and right. there's context for that. And right. you know, Obama was good at it. Man. He's saying right, and I you know. He's saying in Spanish what he just said in English, right? And so you don't have to be like, well, what did he say? What did he say? Um, And that's what was so shocking about... Awkward, right? Awkward, not shocking. It was awkward about that moment. It was um, was like, I don't know what he's just saying. (laughs) Uh, And... And that we didn't. Yeah, just, and I, like, okay, I don't is know it what over? And then, he, and then it just was like he, and I think it was all downhill for him at that point. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really was. was. And then it we then that, that was it. And then he disappeared. Like I didn't hear anything. Else. Like after that Spanish thing, I don't well, think he I looked, don't remember. And he looked uncomfortable speaking Spanish. Well, that's, that's how he that was mm-hmm. all the time. If he's not like yelling, it's like that's his like normal like mm. stance. Like he's. 
I, I had so much like I, I had so much faith. In, I thought he was like uh, going to be someone like that people would really we'd be like supporting. But like I feel like he's just he just like deflated. It, I don't know. He's, he's just he's got weird body language in over his head. Yeah, he's the sweat mark. Like he's sweating all the time. Yeah, like he's just, you know what bothered me too. I'm sorry, I had to say no, totally. Because I was actually on when I was on MSNBC last weekend. We were on set with my friend um, Susan. Mm-hmm. We were on set watching the South Carolina convention, Democratic mm-hmm. convention. Right. And I don't know if you watched it, but he, you know, he has a way of speaking. Um, like literally standing on a box yes, or sort of in the a, middle of yeah counters. Yep. Yeah, that's and all I was thinking of when did I said that, that. He did that at the convention. Like everyone speaking on stage and on oh, the stage no. and the podium. Oh, right, right. He comes without a shirt. And t- if I remember, he had no jacket and I don't think he had a tie. And he then stands in the middle of the audience to speak <laughs> with all of these. Ca- so, but the, but the but this is why the optics so, are the optics are just, problematic. I love it. Why you really <laughs> have to think these things through? <laughs> <laughs> because if you're in the room, mm-hmm. you have a problem because. He's standing in the room, mm-hmm. but there are all these people standing around him with cameras. Mm. So if you're the sitting pictures. down, if you're like an older woman sitting or a man sitting down in the back, you can't see him because there are people around him. <laughs> you can hear him now. You can hear him. But you can hear him. And so here's the other part of that problem. If you're on TV watching this, oh, all wow. you're seeing are like 20, 30 people standing around him Mm-mm. with cameras. And guess what? Mm. Most of them, if I'd say all but two of them were white. Mm. So you're like, wait a minute. You're in South Carolina. <laughs> the black vote is the biggest black is the biggest vote in the state mm-hmm. in the primary. And they're nothing but white people standing around you. <laughs> that was just like, I was just like, really? That oh, Beto. That just did not make sense to me. Mm-hmm. No, you know, Beto to me, he, he's here. He's off, That's man. poor he's management. Yeah, <laughs> like he's, his team is failing him. I, I, I can see him just like. I thought he pumped. has Obama. Doesn't he have Obama's like advisors or something? Wasn't that what one I of them? I mean, he might. I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know, man. I, 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 he seems like a guy that's just. He, okay. he, I could see him picture him like getting all pumped up behind the dresser somewhere. Like, well, we'll go out there, put a box in the middle, and it's the 1920s. It is in the 1920s. <laughs> they'll come out there and they'll put a box and just it speak was, to the people. It, that's what I'm going to do. And just. Yeah. Thinking his own little crazy oh way of. Wow, All right, let's up. get let's get to the next one. Um, Eric Swalwell, um, the 38 year old U.S. representative for California's 15th congressional district, took a jab at Joe Biden regarding um, Biden's age. Um, Biden's 76, and he'll be 77 in November. Sleepy Joe. Okay, let's hear it. I was six years old when a presidential candidate came to the California Democratic Convention and said, it's time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans. That candidate was then Senator Joe Biden. (laughs) Joe Biden was right when he said it was time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans 32 years ago. He's still right today. Okay. Got yeah, that's so. Oh, pass the, the torch. 1986. That was the best part of that the, was awkward. That, that, the whole night. I think right there. Really? That's so, I mean, it was. So like, do you guys feel so like by when he said that? Yeah. So do you guys feel like um, it's time for like a younger person to? Because like yes. Biden was like in his forties at that time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this guy is thirty eight. Right. So it's technically the same time. You know, saying that. So how do you guys feel about like this ageism that? is happening with Biden. Everyone's saying how old he is and you're saying he looks old. You know, do you think that I don't his think, time... I don't think age is necessarily the problem, but I think you need to be able to tap into like the, ch- the generational shifts that are happening and like you have to understand like where we're moving in society and a lot of them just don't. The mm-hmm. kind of older establishment, they, they don't get it. It's hard for them. They it's don't like get what trying. millennials they, are dealing with, or faced with. They don't understand the technology changes. They don't understand automation implications in the economy. They just are missing it. And so so I think that's what Eric was trying to say. He's like, we understand what's happening, climate, like everything. We should be the ones to fix the problems. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I kind of agree with him. I don't want to say it's like I mean, age alone, but it's just Joe's running on the same thing. A lot of those establishment um, uh, uh, politicians are as well, and it's just not going to work. Well, anymore. the president now is like in his seventies. Like, why? Why is it? But he switched that? it up. Like, you, I guess you, you just. I don't. I, I he think he used Twitter to get to where he's at. 
he knew from the jump that he had to get to the young people. How that to get what, true. what what that's true. What yeah. was the but, but just using a younger <clears throat> model, platform. like yeah. And Trump. So. That's what I'm saying. But Trump is a smart so guy. I don't know if the age was a good thing, but I think his point he was trying to make is a good thing. And I personally do want to see younger, more diverse people in office. So I mean, I'm gonna. I agree. mean, we're the ones that are gonna be dealing with like anybody that's like under fifty has to deal with like what's about to happen yeah, right yeah. so it's kind of weird when you have these older politicians that are like we're gonna run the country and it's like but you guys have how many years <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like, no but disrespect also, but you also know? too it, that's a I, I guess I don't a know if that's a nice phenomenon, phenomenon, but that's it's nice. I mean we've been through this sort of before because people had the same uh, concerns and issues when Kennedy ran. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, well, mm-hmm. he's so young and he's, you know, can we really, does he really know what he's doing and mm-hmm. so on and so forth? Oh, he's just rich from a big, from a famous mm-hmm. family. So, like, can we really trust him? And he went through that, that the country went through that as well. We didn't really get to that point again until Clinton in 92. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think, I think, Maxine, like, so you're right that the, there was, um, because I distinct, I distinctly remember when Bill Clinton was my first presidential vote, and so I distinctly remember when he went on the Arsenio Hall show. Now, to somebody under thirty, y'all not going to really understand this <laughs> Arsenio of the Arsenio Hall show at that time, but it was the only he was the only black person back when you even only had maybe five channels. He was the only black person on late night TV. And so, for Bill Clinton to go on that show and play the saxophone. Mm. Oh, yeah, that made him cool. (laughs) And so, we dealt with this issue then that, you know, he's so young, you know, we think of our presidents as older, war heroes. Experienced, knowledgeable, right. George Washington was old when you think about it. Like, when you look at all those old, those pictures, they all had white hair. So, maybe (laughs) that is part of, like, why is that, like, a historical thing that... Did it shift with Kennedy? I like think you like saw. I think he. If I'm An just Obama going thing. through my uh, mental rolodex uh, of presidents, I think he may have been the first really young president that we've had. Maybe I think the youngest to date. I could be wrong wow. about that, but no, at that time. At the time, because he was in his forties, like he was like. Uh, right. And then Bill Clinton in his forties, and then Obama, right. and so we've. We, All the cool ones, we, yeah. We, yeah, we. But I think it's also important to note that with that comes. It's not just a generational shift, but it's a, a movement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my presidential, presidential campaigns are about movements mm-hmm. and social political movements. But how do you so, feel about that, though? Do you feel? How do you feel about them targeting his age? Do you think that that's something that's like? Is it? Is it? Is that like something that we can? Um, it's problematic. It's value. Yeah. Like, is that like a? Well, I think there are people who are old that seem old, you know, <laughs> and I think that's the issue that you raise where if. I don't. If you you may not care how old someone is, if they are um, keeping up with the times, yeah. if they seem current, if they understand the generational political shifts over mm-hmm. time. Right. So to to his comment about Trump, you know, Trump seventy something year old man, but you know, this dude was all over Twitter, yeah. and that's how young people get their news in many ways. And then you, so how do you, how do you then? Um, so he, he he may be old, but he's communicating to a very broad spectrum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sure. there are some who will only communicate up mm-hmm. here or down here. And so he wasn't as, Trump wasn't as compartmentalized in the way, that, in the groups that he touched. Right. There are some electeds that are, and that's why I think you see the, 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 the sort of ageism mm-hmm. maybe playing out a little mm-hmm. bit. Very true. What are your thoughts, Max? Do you, do you, what do you think about because he made a good, very good point. I, I think everything I he totally said is like, agree. he kind of like hit and it on so the nail. Like, I don't, um, generally speaking, want that message to be put out that, you know, if you're at a certain age, you you know, you shouldn't you, you shouldn't hold office or you don't. I, like I said, it, you have to be able to understand what's happening today. Mm-hmm. Be current and I'm with you. I'm fine. I don't know if that's Joe, unfortunately. Aww. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's get to the next, uh, the next one. Well, wait a minute. Oh. Is it Bernie? Oh. No, I complain about the same thing. <laughs> well, you know, I think he's so angry. Or Elizabeth, because she's about to be. Sick. I complain no, about the she, same thing. Okay, with but Bernie. now, but like Elizabeth, see, she. She's not. How old is she? He said she's going to be Six, seven. She's, she's sixty. Really? Oh, she looks good. She looks okay. <laughs> she, she looks. looks old. Her 
She, yeah, she does. She, you're right. You're right. She she, to be 70, you're right. She's supposed to be amazing. 70. She does look great. But here's with Elizabeth. You said it. She like appeals younger. Like she wants to take college, like college, her, her, her stance on like, um, college loans. Like she's all her, her platform to me is just very, um, refined. I think it's, 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 it's for it speaks to people mm-hmm. like us like the younger audience Agreed. i think general yeah i think she's going to cut across you know what i mean mm-hmm. but like bernie and she's taking the bernie people too by she the way. is totally she's, she's going left on to purpose them. she's this whole thing is a show well, has this always been her like i don't, I don't know she's going she they figured it out like she's going left and she's taking bernie people yeah but it's a, but it's they, said, but they said the direction of which she's kind of like going mm-hmm. up and he's going down it's like well, that was the problem I always argued. People were like, well, Bernie's attacking Biden. And I said, he shouldn't. He should be going after Elizabeth. Because if you're a Biden oh. voter, if you're a Biden voter, you're, you're not going to move to Bernie. <laughs> right. No. That's just, you know, no. Bernie's there's, not going to take you there. away. No. Right. Never. But if you're Weird. a Bernie voter, you will go to Elizabeth. More Elizabeth, yeah. And, you know, and, but so, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I think she's, I think she, and she appeals a lot younger. Because yeah. I wouldn't have known she was 70. Yeah. She appeals a lot younger. Yeah. And she's, you know, and she even went on the Breakfast Club, which was smart. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's something that. I don't see like a Bi- I don't Yang see did. like a Biden. Yeah, I know, but I don't see <laughs> Biden no, doing just, that. You know? No, you made the Breakfast Club reference, and you thought of the sh- movie. Uh, yeah. That's oh my God. First <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's my first to the oh Club. no. Okay. Great movie. No, it is a good movie. Okay, <laughs> let's get to Tim Ryan. Um, Representative Tim Ryan of Ohio called out the entire Democratic Party for missing the mark on targeting the Midwest working class. Um, white, although didn't call out race. Voters who helped get Trump elected. Is he right? Let's hear his uh, what he said from his work. We have a perception problem with the Democratic Party. We are not connecting to the working class people in the very states that I represent in Ohio, in the industrial Midwest. We've lost all connection. That We have got to change the center of gravity of the Democratic Party from being coastal and elital, elitist and Ivy League, which is the perception, to somebody from the forgotten communities that have been left behind for the last 30 years to get those workers back on our side. Very good point. He didn't want to say white, but <laughs> yeah, but but hello, midwestern this is, white we, working it, class. We talked about that while we were watching. While we were watching, it's, I said, "So correct." We are forgetting that these people. I mean, I, I don't know if this is just because it's the we're going for the primaries, and then when they go to, you know, whoever gets the ticket, we'll start talking to everybody. I don't you know do if that's, that. but I don't work. think that's a good idea, right? Like, it's, it's not a, work. We're losing out on because I, Yang's not doing that, and he's pulling he's over amazing. conservatives he's amazing. and Trumpers mm-hmm. now. Yeah, so libertarian, like everybody follows him. I mean. I I don't know if they're going to do what Carl did, which is change their registration so that they could vote. I don't know. But the point is, like, I think he's totally correct with what he has to say. And we've been talking about this on the show a lot. I just Mm -hmm. think the Democrats are missing the mark. I personally believe we're moving too left. Uh, I was about to say that. And so you guys are going so way too far I, well, we we have to go. Uh, we have to go left in order to get. But you don't got to go transgender. Transgenders in the bathroom left. That's okay. But there's, right, but right, there's right. a difference right. though. But there's a di- well. So, but no. But, but no. 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 no but, but, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you all are correct because in some ways, right? Like the idea. So, so this is also a generational issue mm. in part. In part because a younger generation is a lot more mindful and concerned and aware of what's going on in other parts of the world than yeah. the older generation mm-hmm. right and you even you even see that 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 issue in in the UK well in Europe mm-hmm. with Brexit right, right. Mm-hmm. a younger younger uh younger Europeans are used to going from country to country and not having those the same border concerns that an older uh, older uh, European might have. So mm-hmm. we are a lot more aware of what's going on in the world. Right. So it's it's for what for us to and I have I have a niece in in the UK who is in college and when I went over there when when I go over there and she comes here and we were talking about her college choices the issue of going to some place where Cambridge? she gets she the biggest Cambridge? financial aid package mm-hmm. doesn't even come up. Mm-hmm. It's not part of her conversation because whether it's the lowest ranked school in Oxford, they cost the same. Right. And for the most part, like you may she get, end up having to pay. Oxford? She's in that league. They call it the Russell League, oh, which is their Ivy awesome. League. And so uh, she goes to Warwick. Um, but the but the most you'll end up paying back is like nine grand. What? And so, yeah. so we know that. 
my her parents, my cousin and her husband, mm-hmm. are both doctors. Mm-hmm. So, and we, we talk about the universal healthcare system all the time. And so, <laughs> she, and they're like, "How in the world do you have to?" And she has a friend. Um, they grew up together in Jamaica. She has a friend who is living here. She had stage four cancer. She had to take a lead to do massive chemo. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting, she had to go back to work. Why? Because that's the only way she could keep her insurance. She couldn't Crazy. leave her job. So she literally had to go back to work to stay alive. <laughs> so mm-hmm. my point is that when we hear more and more of those stories, we're like, wait a minute. We are, 90% of our history, we've been at war. We've never diverted all of those funds and resources to healthcare or reducing right. student loan debt and things like that, Right. And so as we become more aware of that, we're holding our elected officials accountable for those things, number one. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why we're moving left in the way that we are, because we're just more aware of the the failures of capitalism. So having said that, Mm. um, I do think that we did spend a lot of time talking about the bathroom bills and not (laughs) enough time talking about these bread and butter issues right. so even in a blue state like new york when you go upstate it looks more like kansas than it does new york mm-hmm. city yeah and those are voters mm-hmm. who are farmers they deal with brain drain a lot of young people don't stay in those communities mm-hmm. they leave because there are no opportunities those are trump voters and they mirror the kinds of issues that midwestern voters care about and i don't think we spent enough time talking about those things um mm-hmm. and it's a lot it's a and that's why Tim Ryan's right, but so is Amy Klobuchar, and I wish she had been doing better. But <laughs> um, but I think she could also be very good on those concerns. Oh yeah, but totally. see, well, my concern, like mm. I always say on the show, spiritually I feel one way, mm-hmm. but then logically, practically, pragmatically, I don't. Because my my issue with us moving so left is like it's not practical. First of all, basic economics finance will tell you you can't just have a free for all for a country of 330 million people. It's not especially when we haven't been doing things like that. So they stand on stage and they just have these very very left progressive um, policies or ideology and they don't and I don't really think it's practical to get it done. So I, I feel like you're setting the country up for a lot of disappointment mm-hmm. to move that way. And then you move left, what happens with the bi- bi- bipartisanship that mm-hmm. needs to take place in order for anything to be implemented? So yes. it's it's not it's she not like it. I said it's not spiritually where I want to be, but like lot my the lot logical part of my brain is like this is not how our this is not the way our party should be going and, and, so, I think, and, I'm sorry. That, and I was just saying that's one of the issues I have with the Democratic Party and one of the reasons why I decided to walk away uh, was the fact that they make these promises during, especially during the campaigning and the debates and the primaries we're going to do all I'm going to do this we're going to free, free slavery again part two you know you know, we're not <laughs> slaves and it's like okay then when they become elected it's just, it just all goes to the wayside yeah but the, the Republican Party is going right too Maybe two, right? Uh, uh, no, no. But Trump is Trump is not uh, Repub- the the far right Republicans, the rhinos in the, in the establishment do not like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is saying, "I'm for the people." I would assume Trump is further right than the like establishment Republicans. Uh, I think he's. I, I think, think so. he's. I, no, no, I don't think he's so. Not, he's no. not. He's no. not. He's, he's not. not. He's he doesn't. He's we not, don't. Not, he doesn't. We don't even know what I'm he's. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, get, no, I, no, get. no. Mike Pence is very conservative. But yeah. he is not. Yes. He's not more conservative than Mike Pence. Right. He's just his own brand. Mm. Yes. He so is, he, is, so he, he has a very, very, very loyal following mm-hmm. that is probably yes is on the right cult but not yeah it's not as cultish but it's not it's not well it, 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 this is what i say trump doesn't have voters he has supporters which is a little different mm. like he had voters but now he's got real supporters he, does. he has a that you can't too. shake yeah, yeah you can't does. shake he's got yeah. fans. and so and so i don't think he's conservative i mean he, he is conservative but i don't think he's necessarily more to the right he's just his own thing but i, I you know you, there's a balance, right? The mm-hmm. balance is that, you know, for those that are concerned about government, you know, engaged in universal health care and things like that, well, government's been in health care for over 50 years. That's called Medicaid. You know, mm-hmm. we, we do that. We've done this, mm-hmm. right? We can do it with more efficiency, no question about it, but we've done it. So it's not like it's it's starting from scratch. But there is an element where I think what the left is doing now is all or nothing. And mm-hmm. I think that's yep. the problem. Yes. It's, that, it's an all or nothing. So for example, and I actually was on CNBC the other day and made this point, you know, one of the things that I, 
one of the things that makes me squirm a little bit is that I understand taxing the wealthy. I do, I do get that. Okay. But I also feel like it it ends up sounding like, particularly for black folks, it sounds like we're demonizing people who make money. And my point is, black people want to be rich too. Oh we my God, We just don't want the totally. game to be rigged. Right, right. And right. we want our own opportunities and we want um, the tax laws to work that benefit us as well as Amazon, right? And so um, what the party doesn't do is follow up the, you know, affordable college, universal health care with how we going to help black people have economic freedom. Hello. So that's, so when people Talk say, are again. you a Democrat? <laughs> I say I'm a Maynard Jackson Democrat. <laughs> right? And for context, the, y'all know who he was. Maynard Jackson. No, I don't. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So he was a three term mayor of Atlanta, not consecutive. Oh yeah, now. yes, yes, yes. But if you, if remember there was a time when everybody was moving to Atlanta because yep, there yep. was this great burgeoning After the Freak black, Nick time. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. There was During this the burgeoning Nick. black middle class. Yep. Well, he mm-hmm. created that in part because he allowed he provided opportunities for a lot of contracting uh, with African American firms that built the airport, and what that did was it started to lift all of these households into the middle wow. class. Mm. And th- so there was this incredible amount of economic opportunity that created the kind of black elite that we see and, in Atlanta. Uh, and the fact mm. is that most mayors, even black ones, have never really copied that to that extent yeah Same. we have dinkins right? we have what's your mayor served in dc the term. what's the dc uh, one? Oh, the, the, the one that went no the Didn't one that was in uh, crack was resigned? taking crack marion barry oh, yeah. oh, that's, a different, oh, yeah. that's a different like we never Whoa. had good but, yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately we didn't have good sure represent a lot more there's no lot i know more. i know i know but i'm in the 90s i'm in the 90s i'm in the 90s i'm in like 80s 90s i mean like what he's saying like because this is so fascinating what he just said because like i love this this is why i love this show we're always learning something new every time we bring someone we always get something new and that's something I, because you you always figured like, remember there, there I remember in the nineties when, like my uncle moved to Atlanta mm. and my family and it was just like a cool thing to do and then going to Atlanta was like it was just it felt so cool to be there you mm. know and it, we're in the South like right. you will never see me in Ark like in Alabama right, or any right. of those places like I fear those places and honestly whenever my like my talent because I'm you know publicist so whenever my talent has to go to those places I literally like have somebody else go because I'm like totally against like mm. I had to go to a wedding in South Carolina and I literally went from the airport to the venue to the venue I don't even want to be in the way <laughs> like really uh-huh. I'm, I'm such a i'm a north i'm such a new yorker i don't want the drama i don't want because like you know i've i've lived in my little bubble and i don't want to have to deal with like racist moments okay but i dev- that's not the point but the point of what i'm saying is i thought how cool is it that we see like this 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 like um new community this black community like of movement. Up, yeah and we're professionals and they own beautiful homes and they're really really um successful and i mean the only thing i don't like is that it feels like it's like the black people and the white people i Mm -hmm. I don't like i like when it's mixed i like to you know i like to i like the metropolitan feel of like new york and la but you you have like you do have like economic uh, you have a quality of life Mm -hmm. you know what i mean atlanta you can have a beautiful home Mm -hmm. your your kids you go to soccer games and it's a beautiful kind of lifestyle and it's in the south right so to hear that there was a mayor that literally this is the the mayor what's his name again maynard jackson maynard jackson i'm gonna look him up that's so awesome so that's something that's something we didn't i didn't know and makes sense that's why we talked remember we talked about atlanta being one of the best places yeah so, all right, let's get into Andrew Yang. Um, we'll try to squeeze in another two um, topics. Okay. Yeah, so Andrew Yang um, got to present the case for his $1,000 month um, universal basic income policy. Um, did he have a strong enough presence on the debate stage, and was his message effective? Let's hear what he said. Mr. Yang, you have 45 seconds for your closing. First, I want to thank everyone who put me on this stage tonight. I am proof that our democracy still works. Democrats and Americans around the country have one question for their nominee, and that is who can beat Donald Trump in 2020? That is the right question. And the right candidate to beat Donald Trump will be solving the problems that got Donald Trump elected, and will have a vision of a trickle-up economy that is already drawing thousands of disaffected Trump voters, conservatives, independents, and libertarians, as well as Democrats and progressives. I am that candidate. I can build a much broader coalition to beat donald trump it is not left it is not right it is forward and that is so 
he got i mean he got a couple words across what did you think i was so disappointed was it effective? no you've got a shirt he on he i know yeah i do i'm i have my not left not right forward yang merch on um I was really frustrated because I thought he was going to kill it on the debate stage. He only got two questions. I didn't think he was strong with it. In fact, I think he's almost like too nerdy. And I think he was mm. losing people. Like when he was explaining the uh, the universal, which by the way, I was, I was, I'm, I was irritated because I think the moderator laughed at him when he was about to like ask the question that. almost like thousand dollars okay let's let the crazy you mm-hmm. know Andrew do his few minutes of talking about that crazy thousand dollar month plan and he and he just came off like a joke you know and that was his opportunity to show him like no this is a serious thing here and i thought he lost people when the way he was explaining it and it's weird because all of the yang gang we love that he put so much effort into understanding the facts he does so much thorough research but i guess you got to dumb it down for the rest of the country you know like his thing is mad and data and we love that about him but i feel like he went too deep with it and he just it wasn't eloquent (laughs) and i'm frustrated because i really believe in him and so i don't i really don't think he was that effective on stage i agree Uh, yeah and it's how do you feel about yang i mean i think he's a very smart man but not everybody works on a debate stage right like Mm. you but that's what they practice well but you can't some of it you can't teach right like bill clinton was the i feel your pain guy and Mm. you can't teach that you Mm. know richard nixon sweat too much yeah messed him up hillary was actually a smarter policy person than bill clinton she suffered on the stages as well sometimes that that you know just being being the smartest person doesn't work sometimes right. you have to be nope. charismatic more, right i mean that's you had to get the gab actually. man i crush a smart person on a debate stage <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean get the gab, man. obama's talk. a really smart dude but i think he was best at um just being accessible and mm-hmm. that just you know you wanted to like learn more i want to buy into you i want your yeah. picture on my wall next right. to kennedy and jesus like yeah. Yeah. Uh, no he's right King, yeah. you know he's i mean so it's right. It's so that's a problem. Like some people can be really, really smart, but they don't. They just don't sell well. Mm-hmm. Or it doesn't connect. St- it doesn't connect. Oh. Um, even when I do TV, like I can't sound like a professor. Mm. Like I can't because they they and they will tell you that. Like producers will say, and I have a friend who used to be a producer at Fox News for many, many years, and she always came and talked to my class, and she would she would say, "No professor talk." Mm. because people just want something that's a little more Mm -hmm. right and so yeah he could be really really smart but you just got to connect however he did gain seventy thousand followers that night let yang speak was trending on uh twitter because there's a and and i know chris you love a good conspiracy right Uh, so there's a conspiracy that his mic was was uh was muted and you can see in one of the uh, clips that he looks like he's speaking and trying to raise his hand and you can't hear anything you can hear kirsten kirsten is also interjecting and you can hear her but you can't hear him so there's a lot of people out there the yang gang's pissed they got Mm -hmm. trending on twitter and his following has went up so i don't know if if he was effective on the debate stage but he definitely got some more highlights you know the highlights of the the, the night got some new attention yeah i mean i, I think they're giving, they're, giving, they're giving him the bernie sanders treatment right now they did, did bernie in 2016 where mm. the people are speaking but they're ignoring the people and saying uh yeah we know the best option joe biden mm. so and that screwed him before and it's gonna screw him again all right democratic party you gotta, live, you gotta learn democratic party all right well on that note we're gonna end it right there um thank you all for listening to the politics podcast if you enjoyed this podcast please like hit subscribe and leave us a comment let us know what topics you want to hear us talk about next um you can email us you can email us at politicspod at gmail.com and thank you to we have to say a special thank you to our yes. special guest like yes. dr S- dr smichael <laughs> all right very good thank you <laughs> for for coming thank you. and then so Linus, this was really awesome we learned so much really Really? Yeah, yes, here. thank you so much. And I'm Kirsten J on Instagram. Maxine.outabridge. Everybody's very conservative in New York. Christopher Wright. Uh, what am I on Instagram? Uh, Basil Anthony, ba- PhD. Basil yes. Anthony. Okay, cool. So we'll follow you as well. Um, everyone, have a great week. And uh, remember, we have like, we're under 500 days until 2020. <laughs> <Let's> remember. <laughs> Stay, stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bye thanks. Y'all. Have a good one. Have a good day. I think they got something they want to say. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I think they got something they want to say. I think they got something they want to say.